All right, good afternoon, depending on where you are in the United States, I guess. Good morning if you're joining us from California, and uh, good afternoon if you're joining us from the East Coast. And if you're Central Time Zone like me, thank you for giving us your lunch hour. I hope you have food in front of you um, and that this will be a, a, a nice little lunch and learn for you. So really excited to have you here today. Appreciate you joining us. Uh, my name is Chris Field. I'm the Chief Growth Officer here at Holistic Plan. I would love to connect with any of you. I primarily use LinkedIn, so feel free to, to drop an invite or a connection on LinkedIn. Always enjoy meeting uh, current subscribers of Holistic Plan or, as I like to say, future subscribers of Holistic Plan. So really excited to have you here today. Again, I'm Chris Field. I'm the Chief Growth Officer at Holistic Plan. Joined by Samantha Russell, who probably needs no introduction. Um, she's <laughs> That's so kind. Much more well known around the industry than I am. She's the chief evangelist at FMG. You can connect with her on Twitter or LinkedIn, or there's her email address as well. Uh, Samantha and I are really excited to be able to talk today about something that is really timely and uh, pertinent because it's been about two and a half weeks since your clients got their tax returns. So we're still in that window where they probably haven't archived it in their email yet. And they probably haven't quite uh, dropped it in that bottom folder if they've got a paper copy and they haven't put it away in the filing cabinet. So it's on the top of their minds, which means it's an opportunity for you. So Samantha, I'm gonna let you begin and start talking to us about this moment that tax planning seems to be having among financial advisors. Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Chris. Hello, everyone. Again, um, if we're not connected, please, please connect with me. Love to hear from all of you. And let's get these slides going. There we go. So if you follow me on social media, you may have seen me share this more than once because it just really, really hits home what we're talking about, which is the gap between what clients expect from their advisor versus what they currently are getting in terms of the services rendered. And the reason I really want to highlight this is because all of us as practitioners, we think, you know, we put ourselves out there on our website, on social, we're talking about certain topics. And so, of course, the people that come to work with us are going to know what to expect when they work with us. We have these pages on our website called Our Process, and we list out our services. Yet, very often, clients don't know <laughs> whether they're not listening or they're only tuning into certain messages, right? And so what this graph demonstrates is that for what a lot of you are doing, right, financial planning, investment management, People expect it and most of you are delivering it. That's good, all well and done. But then if you keep digging into this, one of the ones that really sticks out to me is tax planning advice. The Spectrum Group who put this study on found that there is a massive discrepancy that of the number of people who expect their financial advisor to be looping in this tax planning advice into the service that they're offering versus the only 25% of advisors that are doing it. So there is so much opportunity for those of you who are offering tax planning to generate new business and to market this service really as something that you provide both to your current clients and to future clients. So that's one study, the Spectrum Group, great. You know, I like to have more than one point of reference whenever I'm going to really be looking at trends. This is um, from Edelman Financial Engines, and they just published this a few months ago. And they asked people across the wealth spectrum in their Wealth in America report. You can see the source below if you want to download it for yourself. Um, if you don't currently have a financial advisor, what would you be most interested in getting help from if you did work with, with an advisor? And tax guidance was the fourth most popular answer, really almost tying two and three there with 21% of respondents saying that's what they could use help with. But what was even more interesting, in my opinion, is for the types of prospects many advisors want, which are those high income prospects, tax guidance became the number one thing. So if somebody had 500,000 of investable assets or more, that tax guidance was the number one thing that they listed. And that same study from um, Edelman Financial Engines, when they you know, asked people, what financial tasks are most overwhelming for you to do on your own? Look at the difference there. Uh, taxes just sticks right out, right? It feels very cumbersome. And many people 
they feel like they're leaving money on the table, especially in the last two years when a lot of changes were made to the way so many people file taxes and the deductions that they take. So people are aware of the limitations that they have. And this is something that they see the value in paying an expert to help them with. And having that expert be their financial advisor who's already managing so many other aspects makes a lot of sense to them. So one more from that same study, um, this was just what are the, you know, some of the barriers that you would find from working with a financial uh, professional. And a lot of people will tell me, you know, oh, there's just this big segment of clients who just really enjoy DIY and that's the, why they don't want an advisor. Um, but you'll see that below there, that actually was the, the least common thing listed. The number one reason that people said they don't currently work with an advisor was perceived cost of advice. And this went across all wealth groups. So even those who had a million or more, that was still the number one reason that they gave. And so we're going to talk about this a little bit more. But as we go about today, when you're thinking about not just the services you can offer and adding tax planning into um, your services through using Holistaplan, how do you then market it and show what it costs? That is really important as part of your overall marketing campaign. And you can see here, this study found only a third of Americans are currently working with the financial professional. There is so much opportunity um, for all of us out there. Okay, those are all my uh, slides on this segment, Chris. Um, I'm gonna pass it back over to you. Okay, awesome. I'm gonna share my screen and go into the actual application. So Samantha, confirm you can see that? I can. Great. So we want to dig right in. And obviously, I love that the, the data that Samantha just shared because it's relevant to this shift we're seeing. And that is more and more advisors are realizing the power of these kind of conversations. We like to say at Holista Plan that the tax return is really kind of the thumbprints of or the fingerprints of a client in that it's really unique to them. Every single, just like every fingerprint is different or most fingerprints are pretty different. Every single person's tax return is gonna be pretty different. So my tax return, Samantha's tax return, your tax return, even if we all had the same exact amount of income, all of the various, the states we live in, our marital status, the number of dependents we have, how much we give to charity, how much we can write off in mortgage interest. Like it makes it such a unique document that every single person, it really is such a great insight into someone's financial life. And what we're finding at Alyssa Plan is that there's been this shift. And we were talking about this with Samantha just a couple of days ago. And that is when we first launched three and a half years ago, we very clearly had one kind of person interested in tax planning. That was the advisor already doing tax planning. And they realized Holistic Plan could help them go faster. And so, you know, the core technology would allow you to upload a tax return, 20, 30, 50 pages, and less than one minute later, you have a client deliverable. So those advisors were like, wow, I'm already doing this. It's taking me an hour. Now I can do it in one minute. This is amazing. But the last several thousand advisors, they were never doing tax planning. And Holistic Plan now gave them a very low barrier to entry to begin having those transformational conversations with their clients. And so when we ask the question, my clients got their tax return, now what? I want to show you how we would recommend answering that question. So again, you take, for those who are not familiar with the software, you take a tax return, you upload the 1040 PDF, and in less than a minute, you have the following documents. The first thing you're gonna end up with is this tax report. This is gonna be customized white labeled with your firm name and logo at the top. And then it's just gonna be a summary of your client's tax return. So the technology with no data entry from you, the technology is taking 20, 30, 40 pages and summarizing it in all of these various categories. On this one example, you can see Schedule D, you can see the various MAGI tiers, Medicare premiums for this couple who is that relevant age, find Schedule B income sources, which can be a real treasure chest sometimes of surprises that you don't know. Um, somebody has another account somewhere that's gaining interest. 
And if they have Schedule C and E income that pulls through on the personal return, uh, you're going to find that as well. And then when we talk about these powerful conversations, we know that numbers don't change people. It's understanding the numbers and understanding why the numbers can move them closer or further from their goals. That's what changes people's behavior, right? And there's all kinds of data out there about that, but we know just a raw spreadsheet is never going to change someone's behavior. They have to understand the value and the benefit for them. And so at the bottom of this tax report, we have these observations. So the software is going to generate these relevant observations of tax planning opportunities based on their age, based on their income, based on all those factors we talked about that make our tax returns unique to us. The software is going to make these custom observations. It's never the same. Samantha's observations would be different than mine. My observations would be different than yours. It depends on all of those various factors we talked about, okay? So this is the tax report. So in one minute, after uploading a client's tax return, you're able to have a powerful conversation with them about what happened last year, and you're able to begin thinking with them about what may need to happen next year for them to be able to be in a situation um, that's more favorable than the one they were just in. You can, you can begin doing that forward looking. I wanna show you a couple more quick things though that, that we get really excited about um, when it comes to transformational conversations with your clients. So this is something called the tax explainer. So we like to think of this as a way to demystify taxes. And one of my favorite pieces of feedback about this is that our advisors tell us they've used this on their own tax return to demystify their own taxes before they've even used it with their clients. So I'm not gonna put Samantha or her CPA on the spot, but I would bet money that Samantha, as great as her CPA is, that Samantha's CPA has probably never shown her dollar for dollar exactly how the IRS views every dollar of her income, right? We like to say, we, most of us know how much we made and we know how much we paid, but there's a lot of confusion between those two things. And so look at this visual tax report. We're able to show somebody on their ordinary income, this income section was taxed at 10%. This income was taxed at 12%. This income was taxed at 22%. And those capital gains, that was taxed at 15%. But then of course, you've got those various credits. Go ahead, Samantha. I was just going to say, you know, I think one of the things that's so powerful about this is that in my opinion, like when I first learned about your software, the idea that you literally upload someone's tax return and you're going to get all this information, that blew my mind. But then when you see these kinds of visuals, you know, put in here, what I say is this is when you get a referable moment. Somebody all of a sudden has a meeting with you and this is the type of moment where they realize the value of what you're providing because it's all clicking for them. You know, being told, oh, the first amount of your income is going to be taxed at this and then this, it's really hard to get, especially, you know, some of us have a hard time with it and we're in this industry. So I just think, you know, when you're using software like this, one of the things that's so great or offering a service like this is that you're really creating those the, that client experience that leads to a referable moment. Yeah, absolutely. And the, one of the things that's so great about tax planning, well, you can say it's great or terrible. We say it's great because for us, it's an opportunity. Everyone pays taxes every single year. And it's not static. It's dynamic because tax law changes. Uh, just in the last couple of years, we've had the SECURE Act. We've had the CARES Act. We had um, President Trump was in office. Now President Biden's in office. There are tax laws that President Trump put into place that will sunset in 2026. I mean, that's just in the, we were just founded three and a half years ago and there's already been that many changes. Do you, your clients are, they're hearing people talk about taxes on TV, on their favorite news station. They're reading about it in the Wall Street Journal. They're getting brochures from the AARP. They're thinking about taxes. And really what I'm saying is they're stressing about taxes. <laughs> this is such an incredible example for you to initiate the conversation, for you to guide the conversation, to be proactive instead of reactive. I would never want a client to call me 
after the uh, Secure Act and say, hey, I just read in AARP's April edition that my RMD age is changing. And I, and I never reached out to them. That, that to me, that's a huge moment lost. I want to be able to say, hey, Samantha, not sure if you saw the news or not. There is some, some conversation about the RMD age changing. I want to tell you what that means for you. I want to say, I, I went ahead and looked at your plan. You guys don't need to change anything. We weren't counting on that as part of your, you know, and just have that conversation. Yeah. And then you're the leader instead of the, the tail wagging the dog. And one other thing that I just really want to reiterate is the reason we're doing this session for all of you right now is that it can, if you wait to ask people for their tax return in August, they're going to be on family vacations. It's not going to be uh, of top of mind to them. But right now, when everybody just went through tax season is the time to do it. And people will actually say, oh, I need to get this to them because I don't want to have the same fiasco I had last year, or the same questions, you know, so now really is the best time to ask. Yeah. And even for you, just to be able to say, a lot of people say, well, I've never done this before. How do I even explain it? And Samantha, you've actually, uh, FMG has created an email template that we're going to share with everybody. Um, that is, if you want to take it word for word and send it to your clients, yeah. you're absolutely welcome to do that. And we want to make it as easy as possible for you to be able to have that conversation. And I've yet to have an advisor tell me, that when they reached out to their clients and said, hey, we've added a service this year, we're going to do a comprehensive review of your tax return and check for any uh, efficiencies and inefficiencies and make sure we're maximizing your tax efficiency. There's no, I've never heard of a client that says, that's really annoying that you've added this service. <laughs> I feel very frustrated that I'm having to provide you with my tax return. That's not, people are so excited because this is something they're worried about. I mean, the Edelman survey showed that, the Spectrum survey showed that. I mean, this is absolutely something that people are sincerely um, worried about. So let me show a couple more quick things, and then we're gonna move into some very practical case studies of how to talk and have these conversations. So um, this is the tax explainer. Okay, this is our scenario analysis. So, so far, again, with no data entry, we took a tax return, we turned into a tax report, which gave us a valuable conversation. We have the tax explainer, no manual data entry, generated from the upload, lets us explain to people, demystify their tax return. And now here's a chance for us to look forward. This is the scenario analysis where we can model side by side what happened last year with what might happen this year or what might happen in the future. So you can change marital status. You can change um, if somebody is is uh, going to add more income, if they're going to add a dependent, if the dependent's going to roll off because they're getting married. You can model all of that and see exactly what the implications are going to be. Um, you can go, if most people are using scenario analysis for very simple things like Roth conversions. And But then there are the nerds among us. I love them. Jeff Levines and those guys. They are modeling deep, deep, deep things in here. I mean, you can model incentive stock options. You can model oil and gas royalties and AMT implications. I mean, you can go as deep as you want here, but most people are using this for simple things. Hey, my client got a $30,000 raise. I want to make sure they're withholding the right amount of money so they don't get surprised at the end of the year. Or like here, you talk about those visual moments, um, Samantha, we have the ability to show a... Uh, QCD. And if we do a QCD, we've got this thing called a QCD explainer, which you can actually explain to your client, what is a QCD? Well, here are the eligibility rules. Well, how does a QCD work? Well, and then in this case, I just made a random one up, but you could actually show them with the QCD what your projections are for how much money they could save on a QCD. By the way, we have the exact same thing for a Roth. We have the exact same thing for a donor advised fund, a DAF, where when you do that scenario, you're going to automatically have something that pops up. And again, I hope you're seeing the theme here. We're not just saying upload a tax return and good luck with whatever happens from there. We have created all of these conversational moments where you're not left alone as the advisor trying to stumble through a conversation that maybe you haven't had a lot. And by the way, 
I think this is why we've grown so fast is because it used to be someone felt like they couldn't give uh, any sort of tax planning unless they'd been an advisor 20, 30, 40 years and reviewed hundreds of tax returns. We've lowered that barrier to entry where you can feel comfortable um, having these conversations. And then the last thing I'll show is we just recently released a cash flow visualizer. So this is kind of all the rage. You guys probably saw it, it was a big, uh, big deal when Right Capital released this um, pretty recently. We were uh, a little frustrated, to be honest. Um, they, they beat us to the punch, although they're not a competitor. Obviously, we've been working on this for months. <laughs> and I think literally it was about 10 days before we rolled it out that they rolled theirs out. But that's okay. We're not competitors. It was fun to see the excitement people had around this cash flow visualizer. This is, if people are familiar with like a Sankey cash flow diagram, we basically built this into Holistic Plan because you already know people's largest expense, which is taxes. You've got their federal tax, you've got their state tax if they're in one of those states. And now you can go in and plug in all these other things that are their household expenses. And then you can see what you have left at the end of the year. This is a really powerful way to show someone why you have the savings and investing goals that you do. So someone might say, we could never save that much or we could never invest that much. And it's like, well, let's work through. Let's yeah. work through and look at this together and, and see what really is possible. I think the, again, the power of a visual, we're really moving to being a more visual first society. I mean, absolutely. I, I shared this on a, re, a different session I was on, but 40% of young people now, when they want to search for something, they go to Instagram or TikTok or like a, vi, a visual place first, because they want the visual of what the burger they're going to look like, they're going to eat is going to look like or the restaurant, not to get a list of listings. Right. And so being able to see that I think, especially when you're dealing with multiple people and some people work better from data, some people work better visual learners, you know, if you have two people in a partnership, it's going to help both people get on the same page. So I think that really, really shows the power of it. One thing I do think is important to address if, you, if it's your, if you're okay Please. if I ask you about it now, because I'm curious to hear what you would say to this. And I saw a couple comments coming in, in the Q and A people saying, you know, the broker dealers are leery about advisors giving tax advice. And I've always said, you want to steer clear that you're not giving tax advice, right? You're helping Absolutely. to visualize where things are going and you're helping to, um, well, let, let me, I guess, why don't I ask you, what would you say to that? So the first thing I would say, and I'll have Tori uh, drop the article in chat, Michael Kitsis and his team wrote a fantastic article that came out last November that is really kind of become the industry's leading source on what is really the difference between tax advice and tax planning. You can imagine they went a lot deeper and nerdier on that topic than I would, right? Michael Kitts is going to do a deep dive on anything he does, right? His summaries are longer than than a, a chapter in my book yeah, would you be. You could but hit someone over the head with their- 100%. Head. But, yeah. it's, but it's beautiful because they really took it piece by piece by piece. So Tori will drop that article in chat, but, but let me say this, Samantha, because this is a question we get all the time. First and most importantly, there is an entire semester class in your CFP on tax planning. If there was not some expectation that advisors were going to be looking at taxes with their clients, it would not be a part of that curriculum. Just, I mean, hard stop. It's literally, it's not a section. It's not a quiz. It's a semester tax planning. Okay. Second, we all know that there's this expectation that advisors, most of them, many of them are going to be fiduciaries. How can we be fiduciaries if we're not considering the tax implications of the, the decisions we're making for our clients? And so I've had people tell me before, oh, I don't do financial planning. I do investment management. How can you do good, robust, like fiduciary, be a good fiduciary in investment management without understanding the tax implications? Yeah. How do you know what to buy and to sell without understanding what you're going to push them? You know, I didn't show it, but like we've got a range calculator inside scenario analysis that you can see what is the dollar break point that I push my client up to the next tax bracket. So even if you're only buying and selling stock for somebody, that feels pretty important to me that you would know also Medicare B&D premiums. 
Those go into effect when you go $1 over. There's no phase in. So selling one extra share of Apple stock might push somebody to owing $4,000 more between a couple on Medicare B&D premiums. I think there is a responsibility for advisors, even if they're not choosing to show this to their clients, they need to understand yeah. uh, the tax implications. So it's part of the CFP curriculum. It's tax advice is not the same as tax planning. You're not, you're not doing tax preparation. You're not saying you'll appear before the IRS in front of them. And I think that's why we've been able to break into some of the largest broker dealers. We, we partner with LPL. We partner with Advisor Group. Um, we partner with Commonwealth. We partner with Kestra. I mean, we have some of the largest broker dealers in the country that already work with us. And you can imagine they wanted to make sure this wasn't tax advice. And they've seen all the same things you've said. And they've decided and concluded this makes a ton of sense for us. And the same, Samantha, on the on the enterprise side, we have nine of the largest 15 RIAs in America are customers of Holista Plan. And yeah, your growth has been tremendous. And usually when the largest BDs with the most advisors adopt something, you know, the rest are not um, far off. But I do think in terms of language from a marketing perspective, you know, what I really advise people is don't say tax guidance. Don't yeah, say tax never. advice. Tax it's planning. planning. It's planning. 100%. So that is really, really crucial. And when you're putting it on your website, when you're posting about it on social media, you want to make yeah. sure you use the word planning. Yeah. And the last two things I'll say, even at the bottom of that tax report, you will notice all of that language is, this is an observation. Hey, Samantha, we noticed you're in the 22% tax bracket. You might consider a Roth conversion while your income is still low. It, 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 there's no advice. There's no, Samantha, you have to do this. And then the last thing is, this is such a, if you're a little nervous around this, which is understandable, this is such a powerful way to connect with your client's CPAs. I mean, we constantly hear, well, I can't get CPAs to pay attention to me. I'm always trying. I send them referrals all the time. They never <laughs> send anybody back. Find opportunities, bring them to the CPA of your client, let the CPA execute those strategies, and then you don't have to worry about it because the CPA is not looking for this stuff. They're not paid to look for this stuff. They don't have time to look for this stuff. They can barely do tax prep, much less forward-looking tax planning. So, so share the heroism, right? You be the hero that finds the opportunity, loop in the CPA to execute the opportunity, and guess who's going to start getting a lot more referrals? It's going to be you because that CPA is going to love that you brought them that opportunity. So Samantha, I showed enough here to be dangerous and hopefully get people excited. How do we take the good tax planning a lot of people on here are already doing because they're already holistic plan subscribers or people who start doing this because of what they learned today? How do we tell that story in a way that's more compelling? Yeah, I love that. So a lot of people have asked, you know, how would I then communicate this? So we're going to give you some examples. And a big one that I'm also seeing come in is questions about fees and how to include this as part of your fee structure. So we'll talk about that too. I just have this quick quote up here. This is from a Bank of New York pushing um, report. You can Google it, Advisor Value Propositions Report. But they found um, this to me is not surprising, but they found that over 60% of investors believe that most advisors make the same promises and they have a hard time, you know, to tell the difference between them. So again, just another reason why tax planning can be a feather in your cap of uh, how you're different and really um, going above and beyond. So let's look at how you can communicate this in your marketing. And actually, um, what I wanted to start with was maybe a little story and we can all together kind of think about it. And then I'm going to give you a bunch more examples. So this is Melissa Joy. Some of you may be connected with her on social media. She's pretty active on social as an advisor. Um, she does a fantastic job and she posted this to Twitter, right? So you can all read it for yourself. But basically the first tax return she processed this year using Holista Holista plan found that the tax preparer took the standard deduction when the client gifted more than 40,000 to a DAF. So uh, Chris, I know you saw this too. What was your reaction? I'm sure you were super excited about the shout out to Holista. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what's crazy is we, we hear stuff like this every single day. I mean, literally every day somebody writes in and says, 
hey, I found, I uncovered an opportunity or there was an accidental mistake or, you know, there was a schedule that should have been there that wasn't. The software will actually flag if something's missing or if something's wrong. And it'll say to the advisor, hey, there's something off here. You need to check with right. your clients. Well, and, and I, yeah. And I looked at this and thought, probably the client, like me, myself, I know one year I donated a bunch to a donor advised fund yep. and I didn't tell my CPA because That's it right. never even crossed my mind, That's but right. my advisor who knows me and my husband way more intimately than our, our CPA, I don't think I've ever met with in person, but right. my advisor, I meet with quarterly, yep. he knew. And so he knew to tell the CPA that we had, right. And so I think this just, again, reiterates the value that you bring to the table as the advisor, but, you know, so she can tweet about it and she did, and that's great. But how could we then take this huge win and the, the fact of what she's able to deliver to the client and, and make it even more powerful in marketing? So this is actually a screenshot from a section of her website, Pearl Planning. Um, I sourced it below. So you can see here, she does have, and I love this graphic, by the way, I think it's beautiful, these hand-drawn illustrations that just go through, like what are the main tenants that we're gonna help you with? And taxes is one of them, right? And so many of you do illustrate it in this way. But I think in a situation like this, you can really go above and beyond to showcase it even more explicitly. So how could a win like this be marketed or the fact that you do tax planning in general? You can repurpose this into multiple, multiple ways. The very first one I would suggest is a case study on your website. I actually was just at um, the Jolt um, Financial Marketing Conference last week, and there were two um, attorneys who gave a session all about SEC marketing. And they said any advisor can absolutely use case studies on their website. So for those of you being told you can't, it might just be that your compliance team internally has decided that they're not going to allow it. But in terms of like what the law allows, it's, it's not an issue. You just want to make sure you're not giving away any identifier information. So here's a great example, though, from um, Thomas Kopelman um, over at All Street Wealth. So he has this success story section. And some of you might want to call it client stories, um, depending on you know what it is, what verbiage you want to use. Success might be red line for you. But he has, you know, you can click on these different people. And in this one, he says, okay, we had these two clients. This is how old they were. Here's the situation. Here's the approach we took. And then under results, one of the first things, right? A low cost tax efficient investment strategy for retirement. So he's, he's highlighting what they're able to do from a tax perspective, first and foremost, because again, we know this is what consumers are looking for. You could also take this story and turn it into a long form blog post, right? and make it again, you don't want to have any identifying information, but talk about in general, you know, one of the things we see is with very wealthy clients, they're donating to donor advised funds. Often they completely forget to tell their CPA that they've done this and let's do some math and talk about what kind of money you can be leaving on the table. If you hypothetically donated 50,000 to a DAF and you didn't suggest it and this is your income, you know, you can run the numbers and show the power of it. You could then take that story and turn it into a video that you post to your YouTube channel or to social media. So again, when you have a great win like this, talking about it publicly in a way that is compliant is a really, really great way to show the value of tax plan. Yeah. And I think what's great is if you're new to this and you don't have those wins yet, you can borrow other people's wins. You can say, one of the reasons I'm so passionate about tax planning and want to review every single person's tax return is because I know another advisor who ran her very first sort of review of a tax return, and she found a, an opportunity that's going to save the client roughly $8,000 if they're in the 20, 20th percentile bracket, right? You think about, Samantha, somebody who's got a million dollars under management at a 1% fee. So they're paying about $10,000 a year for their planning. If you can save them $8,000 and they're going to remember that and they're going to go tell all their friends. Right. About it, right. That's, that's those referable moments that somebody is going to go, Hey, by the way, I had my advisor review my tax return and they came back to me with several options. We mapped out a way for me to be tax optimized over the next five to 10 years, talk to my CPA. I think I'm going to save a couple hundred grand in potential taxes if I hadn't paid, if you know, then otherwise. Those opportunities are out there. 
you just don't know which clients they're out there for, which is why it's so valuable to do this kind of tax planning for everyone and not to make assumptions about who it's best for or who it's not best for. The material tax savings can be huge uh, for for a, a, a couple that's making 150 grand a year. And right. now they're able to start a 529. They didn't think they were going to be able to start. They're going to go tell their friends that, yeah, we just started a 529 for the baby because our advisor was able to find some money we would have paid unnecessarily in taxes. We're actually able to use that now to start a college fund. Like those are the kind of stories that bring you new clients. There's nothing better than sitting down with a client and saying, so guess what? Yep. I just found this situation and I realized you are going to now have X amount of dollars, right? Yeah. Everybody remembers those kinds of moments. Very, very. The one thing that you did mention that I forgot to put in the bullet pointed list here that I do want to make sure we reiterate is once you do get a couple people that, um, you know, have gone through this process with you, it is a great idea to, again, use it as a hypothetical, but to email the rest of your clients, right? Emailing them once, typically your the response rate, you might get five, 10% of people who drop what they're doing to send you their tax return, right? Yep. It's just not something that, it, because they just got through tax season, they might be like, okay, yeah, I'm going to do that. But then all of a sudden, if you write back and you're like, hey, remember I asked you about your tax return the other day? Here's a great example of why. And then you illustrate a story you're going to need to ask them multiple times. So as Chris mentioned, I really wanted to help you all out. We created a pre-made email for everyone on this call and um, all FMG customers. So whether you're an FMG customer or not, you're going to get the, the PDF sent to you of the email template. But then if you are an FMG customer, it will be in the content library starting in June. Um June 1st. And it is a email template that you can use to send to clients throughout the year, asking them for their tax return. So you're all getting it ahead of time um, for joining us today. So hopefully that will be helpful to you. You can just copy and paste it from the PDF into your email if you want to use it right away. And if you have any questions about it, you all have my contact info and you can message me to um, ask questions. But let's is it okay if we just give a couple, I'm looking at the time, a couple more examples here. So again, when you're marketing this, the idea that you offer this tax planning and that, uh, you know, the power of it, I really suggest if you are really incorporating it into all of your clients' financial planning to really put it front and center somewhere on your website. Now, this is very, very front and center. It doesn't have to be like this, but I think it just, if somebody's comparing apples to apples and they're looking for an advisor because they've been burned in the past, that is going to make sure that they are focused on taxes when they're helping create their plan. You want to make sure that you illustrate that. So this, this is one great example from Tenon Financial. Um, Just a couple more, you know, if you're scrolling through his website, you can see right here, he says, we do tax planning. He lays it out there for you. Again, the more explicit you can be, the better. I love it if you can use visuals. This is a visual from Carl Richards and the taxes you paid, the taxes you could have paid, lack of planning, right? You can be very, very simple with the visuals you use to tell a great story because somebody scanning your website is not reading it like a book. They're scanning it for information. So this is a really good way to do it. And a, again, a big tip I have for you is write it in really, really simple language. So like a ninth grader could understand it, right? Um, this is another example from Streamline Planning. Your money can go to four places, you, your family, charities, the government really, really simple, right? So the more you can simplify this type of messaging, the better. I did just want to go quickly into my browser and show you, we have this um, blog post here on our 20 over 10 blog. If you go to the blog and you just search fees, um, it's the first post here. So it's 20 blog20 over 10.com fees. And I'll give everybody the link after, but this is a, a whole page of how you can show your fees on your website and different ways other firms have done it and broken it out. Um, there's a video of me explaining it. So if you're looking for some good examples, this is a great one to go to. Here's this coffee house capital. You can see our client focused services include, they show all the things you're going to get and then what you're going to pay, right? Um, this tenant financial that I mentioned before, they say what we offer, what you get. So theirs is a lot more wordy. And again, they have more prospects than they can deal with. So they actually almost want to make it a little bit cumbersome for people to work with them. Um, and they do a flat fee. 
And then this is another example from Canopy Wealth Management. They are comparing themselves to other types of advisors and they show what's included and what isn't. So again, this blog post can give you tons of examples. Um, one of the questions I did see, and Chris, I wanted to ask you about this, is a lot of people are saying, do people ever break out tax planning if they're not a CPA um, as a separate fee for service? I find with the firms that I'm working with, typically they just put it under the umbrella of the financial planning they're doing and they include it in the fee. But I'm curious what you find. The vast majority of our clients, of our subscribers are definitely just including it in what they already do, mostly because that's how most of them charging. They're mostly doing flat fee. I also will say, I think a lot of that, honestly, is because of the price point. I mean, it's it's roughly $12 per household to upload a return into Holistic Plan. So it's kind of like- Amazing. Yeah, so it's it's not, you know, we, we charge uh, by usage and we charge by firm instead of by advisor. So all of those visualizers and everything I showed you, that starts at $1,000 a year. And that's for as many advisors as you want in your firm. And that's up to 75 households, uh, 75 uploads. So that's 12, just over 12 bucks. So when you're, when you're able to do that kind of comprehensive planning and it costs you less than probably your Calendly subscription costs you every year, you don't really need to pass that on because the win you're getting is yeah. the stickiness, the referable moments, you are pulling in more, that's more assets under and, management if you save them future tax dollars, right? And I don't know how you look at it, but the way I look at it is this. For all of you, you're trying to differentiate yourself. Yeah. And if you kind of gate this service by making it a new thing people have to pay for, you're going to have way less adoption, right? Like now totally. a, a much smaller percentage of your client base will actually pay for it. So let's say only five, 10 people take you up on it. That's only five or 10 clients that now have the, the ability to have this great kind of wow moment right. and then go tell their friends. So I would loop it into the, what you're already doing for the reasons we yeah. just talked about. And you know, have a much better shot of A, getting more referrals, but B, now you can market it in all your materials, exactly. making it a differentiating factor. Yeah. I mean, I've heard stories of advice. Well, I've got a lot of stories of how people are using this for lead gen. We could do that. We could do another webinar on that sometime. But one of my favorite stories is when somebody comes in for a meeting to decide if they want to hire this firm or not. And we know they're usually meeting with a couple of firms. And those firms are all saying small cap and large cap. And, you know, they're using, we're a family office and we treat you like family and you're not just a number. And they're, they're trying to differentiate themselves. But one of my favorite stories is that they get the client to bring in their current investments and a copy of their tax return. They hand that folder to an associate. They walk them to their office. They get their drink order. By the time the drinks are delivered, they're going over their tax report. And they're like, hey, by the way, one of the things that differentiates us is that we will do comprehensive tax planning. I'm not sure if you got that where you've been previously, but I did notice two things, whether you use us or not, I want to make sure you're not overpaying in taxes. And I did notice two things that I think you probably should be aware of. And the client's like, wait, I literally haven't even opened my Coke yet. And you just showed me that I could have saved $8,000 by, <laughs> by having a dad, right? Like, that's mind blowing for somebody. And literally because of the power of technology, you can do that before they've even had a drink of the drink you delivered. To right. The right. That's huge. That. Yeah. That's so, huge. Uh, I think a few other, just a couple more. And then I know we want to leave time for questions. We probably could talk all day about this. A few people have asked about Lee Jen and maybe tell us in the Q and a, would you like us to come back for a third time and talk about how you can capture leads specifically, not just communicate it with clients, not just email the clients, but capture leads. So here's one example though. Um, this is on someone's website, right? So they have withdrawal strategies combined with tax planning, get started. And so when you click that get started button, it has a few questions that it asks. But here, this is, I think, a really great example of you know, if you're hitting retirement, you, you know, are going to be concerned about this. This is another one, um, another case study where when you want to kind of download um, the case study or read the case study to find out how they reduce the taxes. It's a lead gen moment. Um, but so many of you will ask me, well, what about on social media? I love Dave Zoller's post here where he 
take something timely, which is, okay, the temperature was in the 40s and 50s a few days um, in the Chicago area this past week. People were out on the golf course. So the question is, can I deduct golfing if I deduct uh, discuss business? And he, you know, people want to know, can they write this off on their taxes? So for some of you, you might say this is blurring the line a little bit too much about tax advice, and maybe it is, but this is just a great example, I think, of how you can um, intrigue people with bringing them into the conversation and making them aware that you're doing more than investment management for them, right? That's that's kind of the key point. So making a quick video about it. Um, and then we're, you're going to get all these slides. We don't have time to go through them all, but I've put in tons of examples of other advisors basically that are doing a great job um, talking about taxes in video, on social posts, in a way that's part of planning that helps the prospects realize, hey, they're not just going to manage my money here. They're going to do a lot more and it's worth worth the value. So you can look through those and if you have any questions, let us know. But I guess it's, I'm sure you might have other things to wrap us up, Chris, but what questions do we want to address? Yeah, let's do a couple. While Tori's getting those top questions in Q&A, let me address a couple of things. Somebody asked in chat, if they can get more than 75 uploads, absolutely. You can imagine our large enterprises are doing tens of thousands of uploads every single year. That's just typically where a lot of firms, those smaller to medium-sized firms will start and you can go up uh, from there. A lot of people asked how to get to that cash flow visualizer. That's just on your household screen. So when you go into that, click on that household for that family, you'll scroll down and you'll see cash flow. Samantha, I'm sure you saw the news last month that we actually announced that this fall, uh, we are introducing our second product. So we have Holistic Plan Tax, and now we're going to have Holistic Plan Property and Casualty, uh, where you can actually upload a declaration page, and we're going to give you a client deliverable. Uh, think about it like when you get an oil change, where you've got the 50-point inspection different categories around property and casualty are going to be in green, yellow, or red and prompt you to have those conversations. Oh, I love the um, green, yellow, red. Yeah. With awesome. the, with the client, that's going to be a game changer. So many advisors have told us they just don't review those because it's time intensive and it's just, it's, it's hard to do. And so we're going to leverage technology for that property and casualty tool. Then the last thing I promise we just announced a couple of months ago that we have the ability now for an advisor to get their client's permission to opt in and we can pull their tax transcript directly from the IRS without the advisor having to even collect that tax return. So that is that is Huge. literally launching in the next three to four weeks. We've already got almost 2000 advisors on the wait list. It's $400 a year for an advisor and that's for all of their clients. Okay. And again, you can opt in. So like Samantha, if you were my client, you would give me a digital permission that would let me pull your last five years of tax returns directly from the IRS and your next three years. And that, I mean, that's huge. So for next three years, I don't have to come it's ask you pastor, for a tax yeah. return. I literally push a button and the IRS pushes me your uh, two, 2022 transcript. Um, and I'm able to do that tax planning without chasing you down. I mean, it's sort of amazing how many advisors I talk to that their clients, you know, they're just not on it. They don't have that good of a relationship with the CPA. So the CPAs, right. not, you know, they don't know that. And then the clients just never get around giving them the tax return. So they, in my opinion, it's like, you know, you're operating with one eye. You, you're missing such a huge piece of the pie when you don't totally. have the tax return. Yep. All right. So Tori, what were the biggest questions, the most consistent questions? Yeah, the biggest questions are kind of around the email templates. When will they be receiving them? How did the FMG users receive? How are the host of plan users receiving? So that was kind of a big one. Um, okay, we can address that first. So when you get the, um, we were going to email you an attachment as a PDF that that's what you will get the email template as. So it will be sent to you via email. How soon? Um, my team is in charge of this, I think. So I don't want to speak for them, but within a day or two, it won't be. Yeah, very it's long. actually, we have, we oh, have, to, okay. yeah. So we'll send it by tomorrow. So tomorrow morning, you'll get the template that Samantha is talking about in a PDF. You'll get her slides and you'll get a recording of, of this whole session. Fantastic. You see, he knows, Chris knows everything. Yeah, no, it's so, great. <laughs> I just put it together, but I, I wasn't sure. So that's great. great. Um, 
And then in terms of if you are an FMG user, you'll be able to use it right away. You can copy and paste it and, and put it in, but it won't actually be in the library for everybody until June 1st. So um, just the way we roll the content out monthly. Great. So even those FMG uh, folks, they'll get that email from us right. tomorrow. Though. So, yep. you'll so have if you're on the call, you're getting it tomorrow. Exactly. Yep. What else, Tori? Awesome. Um, a lot of advisors are looking for um, kind of directions on articles or blog posts that speak about tax planning as part of the financial planning. So where are you guys seeing the best content out there for advisors to kind of take a look at? On tax planning specifically? Yeah. And how are they implementing it into financial plan? Like how are they rolling this in? Um, as part of their financial plan. One, one place I always look, um, and Chris, obviously will be interested in your insights, but again, we talked about Michael Kitsis before his blog, he has a podcast, financial advisor success podcast. And so this is like a trick on Google. If you put in parentheses, financial advisor success podcast in parentheses, that whole phrase, and then next to it, um, tax planning, Anybody who on his podcast talked about how they implemented tax planning in their profession, it will come up. And maybe, you know what, I'll just show you on my screen really fast so it makes more sense. Um, but that is like a really, really good place. So if you go to Google and you search tax planning and then financial advisor success podcast kit sees. So you see how I have like the first term in parentheses and then the second in parentheses. Anybody um, in his podcast, oh, okay, so I guess it didn't come up. <laughs> my my tip didn't work. Let's do it this way, kids these. This is why it's better to go open book. Um, so any of the articles or the people he's interviewed that ha like mention it would be listed there. So that's probably the first place I would go. Chris, I don't know what you would suggest. Yeah, I mean, I like even internally, we've begun to build out a much more robust, like Debbie Taylor, who many of you know is a very popular speaker. Uh, she's come in this year, and for all Holistic Plan subscribers, she's doing a monthly master class. So it's an hour a, a month. And she literally started in January with the who, what, how of tax planning, and then just slowly has built up. Like in two weeks, we have her fifth session of the year. And it's scenario analysis for beginners. I mean, truly, like that's how we're just, we're making it as digestible as possible. And then all of that is available on our website. There's literally a link that says Debbie Taylor's Masterclass. And you can go back and watch those other sessions. And can anybody so, watch it or just Holista Plan subscribers? Only Holista Plan subscribers. Okay. But you know, like a lot of people are paying a couple thousand dollars for a tax planning course like that. And it's literally, you can get a subscription to Alyssa Plan for less than you could go get trained to do tax planning and get trained for free. We love Debbie. We're like Debbie's biggest fans. Yeah. We think she's amazing. And she runs a great practice. She's so practical. Um, and every month she actually includes a deliverable. So like her January PDF was a tax planning calendar. So it's like, here's what she's doing in her firm every month of the year around tax planning. So that's one thing. And then, yeah, I think you're just going to continue. We had a tax planning summit last month uh, where we had 3,000 people on live for three and a half hours. Penny Phillips, Debbie, Michael Kitsis, Jeff Levine, they were there. Um, that was free to anybody. And we have a recording of that. If you want to email in info at holisticplan.com, we can send you that recording. And in the fall, we're planning on doing a, a similar summit around practice management. Um, talking about how do you use tax re returns and tax planning for lead gen? How do you use it in a discovery meeting? How do you use it on an annual calendar? So really want to shift this whole mentality around you have to be a CPA or you have to have been an advisor for 30 years to be able to add value for tax planning. Mean, look, I'm never going to be able to do it, what Jeff Levine does, right? Like that's not my skill set. I don't want to do what Jeff Levine does. He's awesome at what he does. That doesn't mean I can't add value, even in right. just the way I can explain what taxes really, how they function. Even that is such a huge value for our clients um, that they care about this stuff, which means we need to care. So I think there's a lot of resources. Kitsis has a tax planning course um, that Holistic Plan subscribers get a discount to. So yeah, there's a lot of options. One thing I would just say too, again, I think from a marketing perspective, and we all are striving to have those referable moments. If you think about if you're helping someone plan for retirement, 
Retirement's like this big thing at the end of a long journey. It's hard year after year for you to, you're like, okay, you're on track to meet your goals. People leave there and they're like, okay, that's good. Taxes come around every year and either you get a big bill or you, re, you know, you get a nice reduction. It's kind of good or bad. There's much stronger emotions tied to it and it's yearly. So I think one of the reasons I'm so bullish on using tax planning as a marketing tactic is because it's a lot easier to have these referable moments year after year versus, you know, you have a meeting with a client and they're 15, 20 years away from retirement. There's not a whole lot for them to leave excited about, if that makes yep. sense. So Absolutely. use this to your benefit in your marketing. Yeah. I mean, Samantha, like we know the very best client conversations are you guys are doing awesome. I promise everything I'm telling you is true. And you're going to know it in 25 years. <laughs> That's tough. I mean, that is, that is a tough sell, right? Like, are you, sh- I'm absolutely sure. And by the way, in the meantime, I want to make sure you're completely optimized on your taxes. Like no one wants to overpay in taxes. And I love the idea that the worst thing we could say to a client is, Hey, Samantha, I reviewed your tax return. I ran it through the software we use. I looked for almost a hundred possible opportunities. You are completely tax efficient for this year. Great job. By the way, I'm going to do the same thing next year because tax law changes every single year, but you can sleep easy knowing you're not paying unnecessary taxes. What a terrible phone call to have to have with your clients, right? I mean, that's huge. Yeah, I love that. And sadly, probably eight out of 10 times, that's not the case. You probably find at least one thing in almost every situation. Almost every situation. Now they may not choose to do it, but there's an opportunity for almost every single person we talk to. Absolutely. All right, Tori, let's do one more question. Uh, Yeah, so a lot of the advisors, uh, Christy, were kind of real quick to show off the tax explainers, um, and they didn't quite pick up where they could find those for the client. So um, if you could just quickly kind of explain that, and then um, are they available to um, print Make them PDFs for the advice, yeah, the so, clients. I mean. So I'm in the household screen right here, and you can see I told you guys about the the cash flow. That's right here in the household screen, and then you can also see. Look at this, our little teaser here. The property and casualty reviews can be right there as well when that comes out. Um, but right here is tax explainer. So I've got view return, view tax report, view scenario analysis, view tax explainer. Click on that tax explainer and it's going to take me right to it. And then from that screen, I can go back to the return, the scenario analysis or the tax report. So pretty straightforward. Um, By the way, when I'm here under the dashboard, some of you asked, how do I find the Debbie Taylor class? Right here, dashboard 2023 masterclass. There's our friend Debbie. And look, here's every month. Here's January. I can click on this, find the recording, find the slides, find the PDF. Here's the presentation slides. Here's the annual service calendar PDF. And I can do that for any of the sessions we've already had. And those will get added every single month. So that was a big question I saw in there too, Tori. How do I get the Debbie Taylor stuff? It's right here under under Dashboard 2023 Masterclass Series. Okay, Samantha, as always, you've been awesome. It definitely, people, you can tell us one more time, just to be clear, and you can drop it in the Q&A, but it seemed like there was some interest around possibly doing a third session where we talk about maybe an entire hour on if Samantha and I were trying to grow a firm, primarily using tax planning, what are the exact things we would go and do? And I know I've got a ton of best practices that I've picked up from talking to our customers. They love sharing this kind of stuff. And then moving that from, okay, I've got the leads. They've come to my office. I'm trying to get them to become a client. How do I have that discovery meeting? So if that's something you'd be interested in, let us know. Um, As Samantha said at the beginning, she would love to connect with you on Twitter or on LinkedIn. I would love to connect with you on on LinkedIn. You can just find us uh, by our names. Should be pretty easy. And we will send all of this to everybody tomorrow. You guys asked awesome questions. If you're already a subscriber and you had questions I didn't get to, just ask those from within Holistic Plan. Just contact support, um, and we can answer those technical questions. Our support team, QCD, DAF explainer, stuff like that. 
Uh, if you're not a Holistic Planet subscriber yet, I think Tori's going to drop the last thing in the in the chat. We're going to drop a coupon. We have an FMG partnership coupon code. We'll drop that in the chat. You can use that whether you're an FMG customer or not. And that will get you 10% off your first year of any of our plans, $9.99 or above. So you can just go to holisticplan.com. We have a free seven-day trial. And you can upload your own return. You can upload your mom's return. You can upload your friend's return. And uh, start to see for yourself the impact that this can have on you and your clients. Use that code um, FMG10 to get 10% off your first year. And we hope to see a bunch of you become subscribers. Samantha, we are coming off the tax planning summit. Uh, May has already been a, a record-breaking month. It's it's May 10th, and we've already had 120 new firms start using Holistic Plan. You guys are killing it. And I love... Cool. I love partnering with you. I love all the people saying, yes, they would love to see more of that. Obviously, awesome. um, my expertise is more in helping you market this. And if you, again, if you want to learn more about FMG and what we can help you do and more of the marketing communication side, just go to fmgsuite.com or send me an email, srussell at fmgsuite.com. Awesome. Samantha, as always, thank you so much. Tori, thank you for moderating. And we'll get all this stuff out to all of you tomorrow. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys.